Rub up your engines! Okay, we got an interesting one today. It's a 97 Toyota Tercel. These are all made in Japan, by the way. Subcompact basic cars. And in the case of this, it's got a three-speed automatic transmission. It's only three-speed, there's no overdrive. Now, he drove a long way from Ohio to Tennessee here, and he was doing 80, and he was hoping the engine didn't blow up because it was going so fast, but he still got over 30 miles a gallon. But if he drives it normally 60 miles an hour, he can push it up to almost 40 miles a gallon. They are economy cars, there's no arguing that. These have a bad nickname amongst mechanics. A lot of mechanics called them turd cells because they were like turds and had problems. Now this is the one of the later model ones. They only made them two years more than this and they stopped making them. So why did they call them turd cells? Well, it had to do with what was under the hood. Now in the case of the 97, this is a good engine, good transmission, but the earlier ones had two large problems. For a while, they used this ridiculous side draft motorcycle type carburetor on these things that were absolute disaster areas. What we used to do back in the day was we took them, we threw them away, and we'd put Italian Weber racing carburetors on them. But, of course, today it's against the law for anti-pollution reasons, you're not allowed to do that kind of stuff. But that's what we did to fix that problem. Now, the earlier ones also had bad valve seals. The valve seals on top of the engine made out of rubber. They didn't use the right kind of rubber. And they all burnt oil. Now, to replace valve seals is a gigantic pain in the rear end. You gotta take the engine apart. Now, theoretically, you can do it by putting compressed air in the spark plug holes, getting special tools, and taking it apart. But believe me, it's a royal pain in the butt. So most people with the older than this that do burn oil, they just keep adding oil. My grandson's Camry that's got the stupid four-cylinder engine that burns oil. He just keeps adding oil. He keeps running. He keeps adding oil. So most people with the older Tercels that had valve seal problems, they just add oil as it burns. But that's why people really called them turd cells, because the carburetor ones were terrible. They didn't run right, they didn't have much horsepower, and then they would burn oil. This one has got a regular Toyota fuel injection system. The valve seals are fine, they don't really burn oil, so they're actually really good subcompact cars. So why did Toyota stop making them? Of course, mainly it's profit. Subcompact cars. This was the cheapest car Toyota made at the time, right? You make less profit on a car that costs less, right? It only makes sense. So this was replaced with the Toyota in quotation marks, Yaris. That's why you don't see these things around again, which is kind of a sad case, because they really did kind of start out as turd cells, where they weren't that great cars, where this thing, hey, it still runs around. His brother had one, and he said he was in like 10 wrecks, and the thing still kept going. That's why he bought this one used a while ago for three grand with a little over 100,000 miles on it. He saw what that thing could take, so he decided he was gonna get one. Oh, it's still got the original struts on it. It bounces a little, but it's not outrageous. The right one's worn a little bit more than the left one. Now the back, the back's actually in better shape than the front, but that's typical. And that's because all the weight, the engine, the transmission, the drivetrain's all in the front. So the front ones will wear out more than the back ones because there's more weight. Unless you carry a ton of weight in the back, the front ones are gonna wear out a lot further. It still goes though, when we look at the tires, you can see they're not wearing oddly. It's not really affecting it all that bad. And as the owner just informed me, Mud flaps are added by the previous owner, only in the front though. You can see the paint starting to fade in parts, but it's not a horrible paint job. And seeing that it's living in Ohio, you're always gonna get some rust down the edges here. But as we look around, and we'll get under it, it's still structurally sound. Superficial rust, but it's still a pretty sound car. Now, the other reason they were called turd cells were speed, guys. This thing's only got 93 horsepower. But on the other hand, if you're driving the legal limit, like 60, 65, you get 35 miles a gallon and up. It gets good gas much. It's not going to beat anybody in a race. That's not what it's made for. It is a subcompact car. And as it stands, as we go inside, it's got the usual subcompact interior, but it's still in good shape. The seat's not ripped. The side, I don't know what that design is. It's the weirdest thing. Sometimes the Japanese have weird ideas, but it's still in one piece. The dash isn't cracked. The other seats are good, and there's still a reasonable amount of space in the back seat. So let's start her up. It's a Toyota. It starts right off. Turn the fan off. We don't need that. And as you can see, the engine's still purring along. It's just a 1.5 liter, but it's a small vehicle. It's a 16 valve four-cylinder engine, well-made. 
It's not as complex turbo GDI. It's a regular Toyota fuel injection system. With the old style electronic ignition, I always found these amusing. And that two of the spark plugs have ignition coils, and the other two feed off of those ignition coils. They decided, I guess it was cheaper to make them with two and not four. Of course, all the new ones have one for each one. But this system works perfectly fine. And guess what? It's got an air conditioner on it. And as we go inside, it actually blows colder than his newer cars do. They were simpler in those days. And man, they could put out cold air and listen to it under the hood. Okay, the air conditioning's running. You don't even hear the compressor. Modern ones, you're all kinds of noises. They made these things solid. They can last a really long time. So let's take it for a spin. Yeah, all the old ones did sound a little tinny like that, but hey, they're lightweight cars. Now these are so old, for those of you who don't know, these are called window cranks. And when you want to roll your window down, you turn it, it cranks the window down. And then when you turn it the other way, it cranks it up. And this is called a door lock that locks the door, that unlocks the door. It's not built into here, like modern cars. And you can see he's had his own radio stuff here. It's still got the original one though, you know? It's probably got a cassette, though. it's a CD. Oh my God, it's really new. It's got a CD, it's not a tape deck. That was really something in its day. And of course, we put it in reverse. There ain't no stinking backup camera. You gotta look behind you on this baby. And of course, you're gonna hear rattling where the rust is and stuff, but that was the joy of Tercels. Probably another reason they call them Tercels. They weren't the quietest vehicles in the world. They don't have any insulation on them. They just go down the road and hey, the power steering still works perfectly fine. Doesn't make groundy noises. And as I listen, the wheel bearings aren't worn out or anything. I mean, you gotta consider, this thing's only got 121,000 miles on it. And I've seen these things with 400, 500,000 miles on them too. So he got lucky and bought it from the original owner. Do a stop and uh, the brakes work perfectly fine. Realize this baby does not have anti-lock brakes on it. So you need to know how to drive. So those of you who don't know how to drive, don't buy one of these because you won't know when to pump the brakes. You won't even know what that means. Now we'll take it to the drag race and you'll see it's not a race car, but We'll see how much of the 93 horsepower this thing has left in it. But it does handle surprisingly well. Yeah, let go of the steering wheel. Now there's nobody behind us, so I'll come to a stop here. And then we'll see what's left of this thing. Ready, set, go. Well, it's starting to pick up speed. There it goes, but listen to that engine. The engine does not sound bad and it shifts pretty good. Still really smooth shifts. Now you only got three speeds. That's it, baby. No more than three. But the ones that are there are still working quite well. See from the dash of this economy car, it does not have a tachometer because you'd probably be worried going at high speeds how fast it was going. So they don't want you to know. You just hear the noise. But really, that engine still sounds good. And really, as we go on the twisties here, it still handles quite well. These weren't really slouchy cars. They were nicely built subcompacts, at least the last few years, when they didn't have the stupid carburetors on them or the oil-burning engines in them either. So there we have it, a Toyota Tercel. The good, the bad, the ugly. Realize this one's still got a lot of life in it. If you can find one that's the later model ones that have the fuel injection, then the coil ignition system, even though it's just a three-speed transmission with no overdrive, realize one thing. That is a completely hydraulic three-speed. It is something that can run forever. Like those old GM transmissions, when they were only three-speed, they didn't have the problems that the modern six, eight, ten, nine-speed ones have. They were much simpler. They can last a really long time. And since this is a light car, if you're driving 55, 60 miles an hour, you can easily get 35, 38 miles a gallon driving this thing. And it still is fun to drive. Now you know about the Tercel, why they called them turd cells, why people didn't like them. But if you can find a one owner one like he did, and hilariously enough, he bought it from an old man who was in Korea, in the Korean War. And he was in the Gulf War for two whole years. So he didn't even have to buy the sticker. <laughs> He's a member, but the sticker's already on the car. So you got a two for one there. And understand one thing, just cause they don't make them anymore. I'm gonna be doing a brake job on this thing. He got parts easily online, saved a lot of money. They made a lot of these. A lot of the parts are interchangeable. Don't worry about not being able to find parts to fix them. And of course it's Toyota, they don't break all that often. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.